Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Resort Review. Today we're at the Renaissance Orlando at SeaWorld, checking things out right before a cruise over to the Bahamas. It's located right across the parking lot from SeaWorld and I happen to have a pass. So we're going to check out the whole hotel as well as pop over to SeaWorld and see what's going on there. As always, I started my journey in the American Express Centurion Lounge at Phoenix Airport. Probably my favorite lounge, though, on the channel is my new review of the Chase Sapphire Reserve Lounge that just opened up in Terminal 4 as well, so check that out on the channel. Arrived in Orlando after a lovely American Airlines flight, grabbed a quick lift, which always seems to be a lot cheaper in Orlando. I'm not really sure why, but it's uh, definitely cheaper and super easy to get over to the hotel. Quick little ride on the toll roads and checked in at the front desk, retrieved my keys, and headed up to room 9112. So here is a basically standard room with a view of SeaWorld that'll show you when it's not dark outside. Overall impressions definitely feels a little bit larger than your standard Marriott hotel room. Maybe that's just the way uh, this room feels to me. Uh, but you have plugs near the bed. You have that old USB plug there. Uh, it definitely seems like the room is in decent shape though not like freshly renovated or as new feeling as some of the other marriott hotel rooms that i've stayed at in the past it's been a long time since i've stayed at a renaissance property so i'm just kind of excited just to check things out but overall a very comfortable room uh, obviously a big television right there and you got the mini fridge which on these videos i always have to guess which side of the mini fridge is going to open for me today it was the right side and then the coffee maker hidden way down there a little annoying if you're a fan of coffee in the room not a big coffee in the room fan unless they have the nespresso machines that are just kind of my style of coffee i love a good espresso fold out couch there and then inside the bathroom is going to have two sinks which is great for traveling families this is considered a resort i'll talk about the resort fee in a moment looks like i got like an ada room here uh, which is not something i requested uh, but no big deal and had a nice, lovely view of SeaWorld across the parking lot, which we'll check out at the end of the video. Now, I love these atrium hotels. I just feel like they don't make them like this anymore, though it did add a lot of room noise. I did hear a lot of things going on in the atrium and the hallway, even though I did get in pretty late at night. So just keep that in mind if you're someone who's noise sensitive. Uh, this may not be the hotel for you, as all of the hotel rooms are going to be facing the atrium in some way or another. Um, though I did like these rooms with their own balconies or Juliet balconies rather that overlooked the atrium. Two banks of three elevators each on either side felt a little slow to me, but not a big deal. Only came up to the room twice during my stay. Again, a quick one night stay to do this review and head over to uh, Port Canaveral for a quick Bahamas cruise, which you can look forward to that on the channel as well. So we're walking into the lobby from the Port Cochere. Check-in is going to be over to the left and concierge over to the right big bank of elevators heading up to the rooms right here and then to the right here is going to be the resorts coffee shop and to go breakfast lunch market area definitely felt nice and revived definitely something that has been redone in the recent past i'm going to give a shout out to the staff here there's a little mix up on my coffee order which uh, is included in the resort fee and uh, the worker who made the mistake gave me a free chocolate croissant as an apology, which was definitely not needed. It wasn't that big of an inconvenience at all, but that was really nice. Now, in addition to being a resort, it's also a big convention hotel. There was a pretty big convention uh, at the hotel during my stay. So lots of bar activity in the evenings, which is nice. Uh, they did last call at the bar at 11.15. I got in off of a 10 o'clock flight, so it was nice to grab uh, a beer after a long flight, and I'll explain why that beer was so delicious in a second. Walking out towards the parking lot, there is another shop here uh, selling mostly souvenirs and things you might have forgotten on your trip, but lots of items in there, a lot more uh, activity in there than I would expect for uh, a typical hotel here in Orlando. And then you have the self-parking out here. There's also valet at the hotel. Both are a paid option at the hotel. There's no free parking here, unfortunately. No way to save money on that expensive SeaWorld parking fee across the street. Coming back inside, you can get another shot of the Grand Lobby here. It reminds me of the Hyatt Regency Orange County, which is located right next to Disneyland. Loved this waterfall feature here. Uh, no fish. It did seem like they had like a parrot at some point uh, there on that little island. Um, it seemed like that was a 
very intentional placement of that wood stump. But here was the bar that I spent my most time at at the hotel. They had a big screen here with Thursday Night Football on, which was awesome. And I did spend my time here because I got two free drinks at check-in as part of my resort fee, which is $45 a night, which is highway robbery for sure. But at $10 a beer, uh, it did take a little bit of the sting away and a good excuse to watch the end of a pretty exciting football game. Here's the rest of the resort amenities. If you're visiting some of the theme parks, you might use some of those amenities, but I wasn't really able to use much of that on my one night stay. So here's another look at one of the bars here down in the lobby. That closed a little early during my stay, so I wasn't able to check that out. But walking over here is the breakfast restaurant. This is called the Trade Winds Restaurant. I loved kind of the country house theme going on uh, as you entered from the lobby. Uh, but a pretty standard buffet. I will give this hotel full credit. They gave me a full buffet for free as a platinum member with Marriott. So that is awesome. Uh, normally they just have to give you a continental breakfast. So that was really nice. Again, a convention hotel. So they're going to have a FedEx store for shipping items for the different conferences that are here. And as we make our way out to the pool, I want to self-congratulate myself. This is another year of Platinum with this stay with Marriott, making it 10 years, and I've had the night, so I am now a lifetime Platinum with Marriott, which is pretty cool. I don't have to re-qualify each year, um, so it's nice to have in the back pocket when there's not a Hyatt or Hilton option that I want to stay at. So outside, as you enter the pool area, there's going to be a ping pong table and foosball table under cover, so good for those rainy Florida days. A really nice pool complex. This is a true resort with a resort fee. It's located right next to one of the major theme parks in the Orlando area. So a nice big resort style pool with the Palms Pool Bar serving drinks and food throughout the day. Shot this early in the morning before the park opened. Uh, so there wasn't much going on at the pool area, though it was still open for swimming. This isn't the only area that people can hang out though here in the pool area. Uh, you also have a I would say a minor water park. Uh, it's nothing like the JW Marriott's water park that they have here in Orlando. If you want to check out a full tour of that property or the Ritz Carlton Orlando that has access to that water park, you can check those out on my channel. So yeah, color me impressed by the Renaissance Orlando's extensive pool area and water park here. We're going to walk up to the kids zone uh, of the pool complex with the splash pad and various water slides and uh, splash zones that sort of thing. I uh, wasn't open when I was walking around, but we got some shots of it for you. Uh, so a lot of fun if you got younger kids. Um, I feel like the teenagers and stuff would get bored of the water slides fairly quickly. Maybe it's a one and done for them. But things to do for the family here at the Renaissance Orlando at SeaWorld. A wedding slash event lawn here in the pool area as well. Again, lots of conventions. They were doing a morning yoga session right here. And here's another shot of the splash pad. As well as the outside of the building, which I haven't shown you yet. And of course, there are hot tubs. Pretty big hot tub here. Again, a surprisingly large hotel. But as we walk back inside, we'll find the fitness center, which overall I felt like was pretty extensive, well-maintained, lots of new equipment, several Pelotons. It's always kind of an indicator for me that they put some money into their gym. They even have a separate room for kind of yoga and TRX and that sort of thing. So overall, I think a pretty good gym for a, I would call it mid-level Marriott property. Also surprised me was self-service laundry. So that's obviously paid, but able to do laundry while on site, which is great. So I partially chose this hotel because I had an expiring SeaWorld annual pass. It was a good excuse for me to head over, ride some rides before having to head over for my cruise. Quick little walk across the street here. Now this parking lot walk at 9.30 in the morning wasn't too bad, but on the way back, in about an hour from now, it was definitely a lot hotter, but you can get a preview of all the fun roller coasters and rides that are available at SeaWorld Orlando. Definitely if you're a coaster fan like myself, this is a spot to go to, though I kind of find the operations at SeaWorld to, to be a little frustrating. It's definitely a lot slower, not as 
well-oiled of a machine as Disney or even Universal. Uh, but I did have to check out one of my favorite roller coasters on the planet. It's Manta, uh, which is just an absolutely fun ride. It's kind of uh, reminds me of Tatsu over at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Um, but it's going to put you on your stomach for the ride. And just all of the flips and turns are just so much fun. Kind of feel like Superman. Lots of other things besides roller coasters here at the park. Lots of shows involving animals. Of course, they don't do the extensive Shamu style shows anymore. Uh, but overall, a lot to do for the day, especially if you're an animal lover. I especially like the penguin exhibit. It's nice and cold, and uh, there were a lot of penguins out and get nice and close to them. They even try and escape their enclosures, I hear. So that's why they're kind of locked down, and you're kind of in an airlock there. But overall, an excellent hour or so here at SeaWorld and a great stay at the Renaissance Orlando at SeaWorld. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you on the next video.